The anime starts with Izumi Yu, a very unlucky guy preparing for his first day of school as a second year student. Although he gets up and dolled up very early, his luck makes him arrive late and as a mess to meet his girlfriend Shikamori. As they walk to school, he reflects that his girlfriend is very cute, but sometimes she isn't. Like just now that she's pinning him against a wall to cover him in front of passing truck. All in all, they manage to get to school and he's very hopeful to end up in the same class as her, even praying out loud. Once he realizes that, in fact, they share classes, he celebrates loudly, making the girl laugh. Then her friends, Nico and Hachimitsu, arrive to celebrate with them as they are in the same class. Inuzuka, a friend of him, also joins their celebration and they go to class. But as soon as the class starts, Yu's bad luck strikes, making him say his name incorrectly. Things keep escalating when they have some free time and a girl drops an eraser that is going straight to his face, but luckily for him, Shikamura punches it just in time, though it falls on her head. As she goes to clean herself, some boys make fun of her boyfriend for being so clumsy, saying that it's a very odd sight that a girl so perfect like her ended up in love with a guy like him. She happens to overhear them and ask the boy to accompany her to the library, so he doesn't see her throwing intimidating looks at the boys. After classes, Inu invites the pro to hang out, and as the girls were about to do the same, they all go together to the bowling. Her friends suggest the pink-haired girl to pretend to be bad at it, so her boyfriend would think she's cute. And although she tries, she can't help but to give her best after he encourages her, even when he sucked at it. She makes a perfect score, surprising everyone except for her boyfriend, who's just happy to have such a skilled girl by his side. Before playing, Inusuka and Miko made a deal about the loser treating the winner, so Yu asks his girlfriend what does she want, but she only asks for him to walk her home, something that they already do. As they walk, the evening turns very windy, so a sheet of newspaper flies straight to the boy's head, but Shikamori stops it without even looking. He thanks her and apologizes again, something he usually does as he's hate for the girl to get affected by his bad luck. She tells him again to stop apologizing for those things, but he confesses to her that he feels pathetic every time she has to protect him. This makes her stop walking and worried asks if what the boys of their class said was bugging him, to which he explains that it doesn't bug him because it's true. He was going to keep talking, but suddenly, the sign of shop snaps and is falling over him. In a moment, she kicked the sign, freeing him from danger. She then grabs his hand and explains that he only needs to stay by his side because protecting him is something that she wants to do, which makes him bluntly say that he's in love with her. After checking if she was hurt, he's about to say that it's almost like she knows when something is about to hurt him, but she stops him very nervously, saying that it's pure coincidence, and they go home. The ball sports tournament arrives at the school and the guys are getting ready, but when the couple checks the board, they notice that Yu's soccer match and Shikamori's volleyball match are at the same time, so they won't be able to cheer for each other. Driven by the feeling, he holds her hands and tries to pass her his good vibes. Before going to their match, the girls stay to look at the beginning of the boys and witness how the protagonist's bad luck kicks in from the start. Shikamori tries to send him her good vibes at the distance like he did to her, but this seems to be of no use as a ball is flying directly to him. She tries to warn him, but it only distracts him more and the ball ends up hitting his face badly. She takes him to the infirmary where he apologizes for making her lose time but she's happy to be able to take care of him, despite how pathetic he feels. She cares his hair, and as she mentions how pretty it is, she notices a big scar at the side for his head. Ashamed, he explains that he got many all over his body from getting in many weird and bad accidents, mentioning that the one she was looking at was from the time a trump into their house. She's leaving when he mentions that he can also take care of her, which makes the girl prop herself on top of him, teasing to get in bed just to leave short after and face the wall from the corridor ashamed. Meanwhile, Nico cheers on Hachimitsu, as the girl is definitely not the sporty type. She then realizes that Kamiya, the volleyball team's star who the girls will compete against, has arrived and all the girls are all over her. She goes to greet her when Shikamori arrives, making the other girl leave upon seeing her. The match starts, and it isn't looking good for the girls. The soccer match ends in Yu, who joined again after the break, and Inuzuka decide to go see the girls. They join Hachi on the Hyder Rose and notice that their team is losing, so he yells his cheering for his girlfriend, who, noticing he's there, rearranges her hair and starts playing more seriously. He then notices Kamiya, who he seems to know, but moves on quickly to keep cheering for the pink-haired girl. The match gets pretty tight, but thanks to their determination, the girls end up winning. The protagonist runs to greet his girlfriend, congratulating her, so they all decide to celebrate. In the classroom, the whole class is celebrating their victories, and although he congratulates her again, Yu confesses that he feels envious of how athletic his girlfriend is, to which she responds that she knows he did his best and that was attractive to her. But that a group of younger girls reach out to her, asking to take pictures with her. Now the next days have fallen into a weird routine where the couple can't spend time together due to the girls' fangirls. So he spends a lot of time with Inuzuka who keeps saving him from his accidents, thing that Shikamori gets jealous of even when his way of saving him is getting himself hurt instead. By the end of the day, the Prota is left to walk home alone as Inu can't deal with more hits for the day. As he walks, he reflects that he's happy for her being so popular, but it still stings as he wanted to keep her cool side to himself. 
He accidentally slips on the stairs, but Shikamori catches him, upset at him for wanting him leave alone. So he explains how he figured that since she became a celebrity, he shouldn't get in the way. This just the girl upset, as she only wanted to go home with him, even bringing up her jealousy towards how much time he spends with Inu. He laughs at it and explains that he was going to wait for her at the entrance, because he has missed her as well, so they go home together. Some days later, Inuzuka gives you a pair of movie tickets he got from a co-worker, as he won't be able to use them due to work. Seeing that his girlfriend has been staring at him, he quickly goes up to her and invites her. The night before, he tries to get ready packing everything he might need, foreseeing his terrible luck. But the backpack is so big and heavy that he's barely able to stand with it without falling. Meanwhile, Shikamori is worried about what to wear, consulting every type of magazine. Her older brother comes to ask her to keep the noise down, but when he asks her where she's going, she simply says that she will go to the movies with a friend, refusing to talk any further. So the morning of the date, Yu gets up and ready very early, and just as he predicted, he got a bit delayed, but not enough to make his girlfriend wait. However, when he arrives to the meeting spot, she's already there, looking as breathtaking as always. They make it to the cinema, and he asks her which movie does she want to see, but had his hope on a romantic one, as he's been fantasizing about them kissing. Yet the girl mentions that they can watch what he likes best, which upsets him because she always puts his desires first, and he wants to know more about her. Being in the spot to choose, the girl picks up a horror movie, who strays in the color from the boy's face. She's so excited to watch it, which makes him ask if she's not afraid of them, which she is, but also loves watching them. Then a fantasy about being able to hold her while she's afraid pops out in his mind, and knowing he might be able to handle a horror movie, they make their way in. However, things don't go as planned, and Yu is at the edge of pucking out of fear, so Shikamori holds his hand, squeezing it tight when he gets scared. After the show, they stay sitting for a while while he gets better, so they decide to go eat something. They get to a bit of a fancy cafe to which he wants to treat her. However, he once again loses his wallet, despite of having put it on a string, so they just keep walking. They come across Yu's parent who are doing dome shopping, and after telling them what happened, they invite the couple to eat at home. Lunch is served, and as his mother tries to fill the girl's place, a fork flies to the boy's face, which is quickly stopped by Shikamori. His parents applaud her and start serving her tons of food, and although her boyfriend apologizes, she mentions that she's having a great time as she hasn't eaten homemade food in a long time. After dessert, Yu falls asleep and a girl goes to help her mother-in-law with the dishes. The woman asks if she wants to see pictures of him when he was younger, but the girl is too nervous to agree. So the woman starts telling her about how bad his luck was, arriving home with injuries at all times, making her worried sick. However, after 16 years, she's gotten used to his oblivious smile whenever he gets hurt. She accidentally lets a plate fall, wondering where does her son get his clumsiness from being oblivious of her own. She tells the girl that she hopes her son's bad luck doesn't scare her off in the end. But she reaches her, explaining that she's by his side precisely, because his bad luck turned him very kind, honest, and resilient, which makes the woman hope she was the one dating her. As night falls, he was awakened by his mother only to see his girlfriend and father bonding over some video game. They say their goodbyes, inviting the girl over again, and the boy sails to accompany her home, allowing his mother to see the man he's becoming. As they walk back to the girl's home, she asks which type of movies does he like, scheduling another movie date for the next month. Summer arrives, and with it, the summer break is closer, so the group goes to the terrace of the school to discuss where they are spending their vacations. At first, they choose the beach, but after Inu mentions that Yu suffers the heat way too much, they have the option of the river. However, this doesn't sit well with him and gets off of Hachimitsu's umbrella to explain that they don't need to accommodate because of him, but they quickly explain that they want to go to a place where all of them can enjoy. So the next day, the exam week is placed on the board, meaning that all of them have to work hard. Tricked by Nico, they end up in a mall so the girls can buy for their trip, although Inu keeps complaining about them studying. Shikamori asks her boyfriend if he'd be swimming, but he explains that he probably won't, remembering all the bad luck he lies to have as a kid with sunburns, so the girl declines her friend's invitation to buy The Tao girls go on their own, but after the pink-haired girl sees that her boyfriend is looking at the poster of a girl in a very She runs off to buy it, excusing herself to go to the bathroom. So Inu takes him to the food alley to study. At the shop, she finds the But her friends also find her and Nico freaks out about her using such a piece. She tries to excuse herself telling what happened, which makes the girl laugh and mention that she's always hated losing. They start remembering how they met, it being short after she and Yu started dating. Nico saw her walking down an aisle and realized how pretty and smart she was quickly obsessing over being her friend. However, it wasn't until a PE class where they were put in a basketball match against each other that they had opportunity to interact. Shikamori suddenly took the ball out of her, and she being a sporty girl, got pretty competitive soon. She called Yu's attention by how cool she looked, which upset his girlfriend, and they had a very tight match. After the class, she approached the pink-haired girl, inviting her to have lunch together and have been friends ever since. 
Meanwhile, the boys are studying for math's exam when Ted girls come back and the proto notices that his girlfriend looks way too happy, so he asks what did she buy. However, she gets ashamed and doesn't want to tell, engaging in a fourth and back of asking. This makes the rest of the group not to be sure of who has who eating from Ted Palm of Tear Hand. Some days later, the couple goes back home from school with the boy kinda crying as his bad luck got in the middle of his test, making him break all of his pens. She tried to cheer him up, but it was useless. That night, she calls him knowing that he would be sulking on his bed in despair, but she mentions that she truly called because she wanted to hear his voice, so he decides to start talking about the starts, both of them looking at the sky from to her own windfo. He explains that he got obsessed over starts during their astronomy lesson at primary school, but every time his father would try to get him start gazing, his bad luck came in action, making it rain. So wanting to make him happy, she promises she'd take him to a place where he could see the starts. However, he mentions that she's already made sure they go to the river for him, so it's him who now wants to take her to a place of her liking. But she can't think of anything as as long as she is with him, every place would be good. He thanks her and she mentions that they should go to sleep as they have their exams, but before, he mentions that she's made him feel better, so now he wants to see her. But the girl gets way too nervous and hangs up. Despite being the middle of the night and shut up by their own families, they can't help but to scream in excitement. The day for the awaited trip finally arrives and the group sails to the river to have their fun. As soon as they get there, they start preparing everything for the barbecue, and although Inu volunteers to chop veggies, he sucks at it. To everyone's concern and surprise, Yu starts cooking doing it quite nicely and not hurting himself, so Shikamori starts cooking a dish for him as well. Once everything is ready, the girl offers her boyfriend the dish she made for him, letting him speechless. But as soon as he takes a bite, he realizes that the spices are way too strong for him, falling to the ground. She tries it as well to know what's wrong with him having the same reaction. However, he keeps eating, mentioning that she made it for him and even himself, mixes up spices sometimes. After the little incident, they all sit down to eat, being Inu the one who eats the most. After lunch, the kids crave something sweet, so you get some s'mores ready for them. They all jump right in, but before his girlfriend could try some, he whispers in her ear that she wanted her to specifically try them. She agrees with everyone that it's delicious, but licks some chocolate for her finger, mentioning that she could eat them all day, getting the unlucky guy ashamed. After cleaning the grill, they head for the water, but Shikamori stops her boyfriend and holding his hand mentions that she wishes the next time they can have some dessert alone. They put their feet in the water for some time, enjoying the coldness, but she looks way too nervous, holding the strap of her blouse. He mentions that they should go with the rest, but as she goes, he notices a little girl being taken by the stream. Nico asks her friend when is she making the great reveal, but she's too nervous to show her boyfriend the she bought. Meanwhile, Yu jumps in the water to help the girl, who at first hits him because she's afraid. He gets her to the shore and helps her climb some rocks, even tossing her the little floaty she had. But as he tries to climb after her, his feet craps, and he starts The group is already looking for him when they hear the cries of the little girl and without even thinking, Shikamura gets her and jumps to his rescue. She manages to reach him before he can lose consciousness and takes them both to safety. She scolds him for acting reckless and not calling her, but as she physically struggles with her own feelings, the rest of the group reaches them, all pretty scared for him. The mother of the girl also arrives to apologize and he approaches her, getting to her level, asking if he scared her. The little girl denies and thanks him, kissing his cheek and making his girlfriend a bit jealous. However, they decide to enjoy the rest of their day, trying to catch fishes and splashing each other with water. Just then, kneeling between the rocks, you notices her girlfriend's new and comments on how pretty it is, surprising them for how slow he was. After that, they hit the town to buy some gifts and clothes. The proto sees a store of gelato and Shikumori asks if he wants some, making everyone get in the endless line. The two of them are the first out very happy with their ice cream. She offers some of hers, which he nervously takes under her sharp gaze, but as she was just about to get some of his in some sort of indirect kiss, Inuzuka eats it all. The boy is sad, so his friend offers some of his, but the pink-haired girl is passed to take almost all of it, though getting a frozen brain from it. In the end, they go back to the train to get home, but it doesn't take much before everyone, except for the proto, falls asleep, even Shikamori fell asleep in his shoulder. He quickly dozes off, remembering how fun of a time they had despite the stress he put his friends through. After a while, the pink-haired girl wakes up, and after checking her surroundings and notice that her boyfriend fell asleep on his friend, she pushes him to her shoulder, and they sleep off the rest of the trip. When they get to the station, Yu and Hachi already can't walk as it was too much outside activity for them. Although the trip was a beautifully good time, Yu ended up getting sunburns all over. As he's resting and talking to Shikamori through the phone, he sees in the news of the Summer Fireworks Festival and decides to invite the girl, as she's never gone before. The day of the festival arrives, and as his father is trying one of his jinbai on him, he explains to them that he's taking the girl for her first time, so her mother suggests he wears a yukata. Then, his father holds his shoulders, explaining that he needs to tell him something important. Meanwhile, Shikamori tries to arrange her yukata, but keeps failing at it. Her brother listens to her and goes to help her. 
although he ruins the cute moment by saying that she's pretty clumsy. Already at the entrance, the proto waits for his girlfriend checking once again to have taken every precaution measure possible. She arrives breathtaking as always and he points out how cucurd Yukata is, so she explains it was her grandmother's and she always wanted an excuse to wear it. They make it in and start going around the place and the stands. Tiggy end up buying one cotton candy, and although he insists he gets one because he wanted to do something for her, she explains that she wasn't a sweets person but she started to enjoy them because of him so he's already done more than enough for her. Then they go to the games and stop a sh game, where he points at a cute wolf plushie he must to get for her. He tries his best, but fails every sh so the owner gives him a cat plushie out of pity. However, she decides to try it, and despite the owner's comments about it not being a game for girls, she doesn't miss a single shot winning the plushie. She then gives it to her boyfriend, saying that she won it for him, melting both men. Suddenly, they come across their friends who have also come to the festival together. As the girls take pictures, the boys go into a catching gold fish booth, but Inu makes it a competition. Yu loses instantly, which makes Shikamori feel like he needs to avenge him, but she's not very good at the game either. Seeing that the fireworks are about to start, Nico takes her friend's place and encourages them to run off. After arriving back at the gate, Yu tells her that she wants to take her to a special place that his father told him. But, as they are about to get there, her sandals lay snaps. He fixes it, but also realizes that her feet are full of blisters. She still wants to go, but he manages to convince her not to and to go to the common spot. He gets her on his back and starts walking when the fireworks start. She then notices that he's not going to the festival and he explains that he still wanted to show her the spot but didn't want her to walk. She complains a little but ends up accepting, although she hesitates a little seeing that he has to climb a big set of stairs with her on his back. She asks why is he doing all of that, so he explains that he wanted her to smile honestly from her heart, which makes the girl cry a little. Once they get to the top, they sit in a bench to watch the show and talk. Yu confesses that he wanted to invite her the previous year, but was too coward to it, and he confesses that he wanted him too, that she only wants him to see her as a cute girl, but he explains that he already does, even seeing her goofy and cool side. They stay there for a while, and when they decide to go home, he carries her again, but as soon as he tries to step on the stairs, his foot slips. Luckily for them, they are caught by his father, who easily carries them both. They ask how come they found them, and they explain that they've always been behind them, as the spot was a place where his father would take his mother. However, they still take them home. The summer break and with it brings the beginning of a new term of classes, which comes with the school's festival. Our protagonist's class is in charge of making an animal cafe, and while Yu is in the customs making team, Shikamori is in charge of the decorations, leaving no time for them to spend together, unlike last year. Both are very jealous about the popple who get to spend time with each other, but show it pretty differently. While he just pouts and looks at her, she chooses to Inu with her stare. The first day of the festival arrives, and while he enters the school, he's given a paper with the number 44, which is a very bad luck number, written on it. The cafe is very busy, getting the proto very overwhelmed. As it was meant to happen, his bad luck stikes, making him slip while carrying a plat with ice cream. But as always, his girlfriend comes to his rescue, asking him not to rush over and ask for help. After a long day of work, the couple is left to walk home exhausted. The next day, they won't see each other, as she has to work at the cafe and he's in the library committee, which will be used as a rest area. He feels bad for leaving all the work to them, but she eases him, saying that she'll work for the both of them. The next day on the hours, Yu goes to take his shift at the library, hoping to be able to work with someone he knows or that is at least in his year. Luckily for him, Kamiya is taking the shift, who he knows because they worked the same shift the last year. She asks for him to help her put some books as she remember when they met and he made a fool of himself while introducing himself. She explains that although everyone begged for her to take another shift at her class cafe, she enjoyed those moments of quiet calm, so he tells her not to worry, as he take care of things. She mentions that he looks different and it probably is because he now has a girlfriend, but things start getting intense pretty fast. Although she explains she's not really interested, she gets very close to him, demanding to know how did him and Shikamori start dating, making the boy very nervous and thinking that she likes his girlfriend. Meanwhile, the pink-haired girl is looking at the numbers board just to find that hers and Yu's don't match. Although her friends tell her to get over it, they understand that it's important for her. The Hachi breaks the four wall to explain to us that the number game is a tradition in the school, where the ones that get matching numbers can take a picture and are jinxed to be together forever. Back at the library, Yu explains that last year's festival, they got the same number, so Tei ended up walking together for a while. When they found the photo's booth, she quickly asked to take the picture, which he agreed immediately as it was his plan from the start. But when he had to pull out his number, he realizes he's lost it. This gets him pretty as it used to be always the same. But Shikamori doesn't allow him to give up, telling him that they'll look for it together. In the end, they didn't find it, but took a picture of the board and went to beg for the student's council hosting the event to take their picture. Although at first they denies it, he wanted to give up. The previous determination in the girl made him beg desperately, and the guy in charge of the even remade his paper and allowed them to take the picture. 
So after that, in the back of Tess' school, he gathered the courage to confess his feelings and she accepted, hugging him tight. After he's done with his story, Camilla covers her face, seemingly moved by the story, but the boy is just tired of talking about himself. Meanwhile, Shikamori, who's been obsessed looking for the one with Yu's matching number, is giving up on the task as they haven't found it yet. But to our information, the camera makes a close-up at Kamiya's number, which is the one they're looking for. We see Kamiya's perspective of her love situation as if in Cinderella, where she and Shikamori both have crystal slippers, but the pink-haired one always gets the prince. She and Yu enjoy their shift talking about a new movie that came out, although he hasn't seen it yet. She comments on the dresses and how good the movie looks, which makes the boy point out how girly she is, although she doesn't think it's that way. She feels very connected to a character that didn't get to be with the boy she liked, and although it's not normal for them to have this kind of conversations, he's enjoying it. Then Nico comes in, as she needs to talk to the girl. Outside, Shikamori is waiting for her ass to trade numbers, as she's finally all found out. Although it seems to hurt the girl, she makes her best to put on a fake smile and give her number away after she tells her it's used. He then pops out the door and his girlfriend fakes to be checking if he could go out early. The blue-haired girl tries to let him go, but he doesn't feel like it's fair to her, and makes the girls wait the 20 minutes that are left. When they leave Tidy Tear, the blue-haired girl sees them walk away just to turn, make her hair up and go back to her classroom to help. Everyone is happy to see her and the customers love her, but soon the noise is too much for her to handle and she asks for a little break. She's up in the terrace having some air when the pink-haired girl comes to retrieve the paper, confessing that she felt bad for taking Ta from her, implying that she knows she likes her boyfriend. This scares the other girl, as she was planning to throw her feeling away. She tries to play it cool, but the other girl's honest feelings are like to her heart and every word trying to reassure her that she's awkward with giving the number back hurts worse. However, she tells her that she doesn't need to worry, as it was never her intention to get in the middle, nor she was going to confess. But opening up her heart and remembering every time she put effort in her appearance to see him makes her start crying. She apologizes and wonders why couldn't they just be Firens as she now feels like she betraying his trust. Driven by the emotion and wanting to make it fair for both of them, Shikamori breaks the paper and hugs her, letting her cry on her shoulder. She apologizes for hurting her even when she didn't know her. But her will to sacrifice her feeling for both her and her boyfriend makes her understand how much of a kind person she is. After crying a little and feeling better, she sends her back to her boyfriend and reflects that such a good person is the perfect match for the boy she loves. The last day of the festival arrives, and with it, so does Shikamori's birthday and their anniversary, so you got her a little present they even bought early, as he missed it last year. In the end, their class didn't win the profit rank, so they had to buy their own food at the after party, but they still had fun. Sitting away from their friends, Hachi asks Tep Pink Haired Girl to see the picture she took with her boyfriend, to which she has to explain that she didn't. Nico, who just added herself to the convo, and Teblon Girl are surprised by this, but to not out Kamiya, she lies saying that she lost her paper. Before leaving the restaurant, the proto asks his girlfriend to go to a park together, and although it's night, she accepts. There, he gives her the present very nervously, but even without opening it, she's already happy, which eases the boy because he has seen her pretty worried since the previous day. She opens it, finding a beautiful heart necklace, which he kindly puts on her. She then mentions that he never changes, but he explains that a friend told him recently that he has. She mentions that it might be because his good traits have come to light recently, and although this should make her happy, she confesses that she can't help but to feel upset about others seeing it, not wanting him to get away from her. He asks if she doesn't trust her, and although that's not the case, he explains that he's changed because she changed him. He knows he's not strong or as cool as her, but he'll work hard to be at her lever, so she can trust her as much as he trusts her. She starts crying, saying that she wants the same. He kneels before her co-wipe her tears, so she grabs his and putting their foreheads together. She promises to never let him go despite a better girl's coming after him. He agrees and tie head back home after it. Days go by and the autumn strikes, making Yu so sick that he needs to miss classes. He asked Inu to take notes for him, which makes Shikamori jealous and worries the blonde guy who doesn't know what to do wrong. The rest of the girls try to ease him, but he's pretty sure about it. After classes, the pink-haired girl asks to go deliver the notes with him. So Miko asks Hachi to spy on them as she can't do it due to her club activities. They stop by a store so she can buy her boyfriend some throat candies, so she asks for the boy's opinion, but he doesn't pay much attention to it. However, when she picks up some grape-flavored ones, she asks for his opinion, calling him nice and he immediately points at the great ones excited. After a moment of realization, the girl freaks out and runs to the cashier, while the boy just stays behind thinking that it felt like when you call your teacher mom. Going out of the store, she gives him the grape candies that she bought as she did pick them for him, aside of the ones she picked for her boyfriend. He's hesitant at first, but when the girl then refuses to give them to him, he starts begging for them. As they walk out of the store, they find Hachi, who seems to have figured out why does Shikamori act the way she does with Inu. After confirming she has an older brother, the petite girl concludes that Inu just behaves like her brother, 
making her have that kind of rivalry slash friendship with him. He doesn't buy it at first, but after seeing the girl try to deny it very obviously, he feels better knowing that his best friend's girlfriend doesn't hate him. Still, he gets his share of fun, teasing her for being an attention-seeking baby, but after a terrifying look from her, he stops. Some days later, Shikamori and Miko are having a girl's day as Hachi got a cold just like you. They are spending their day at the mall when they see Kamiya from afar. The pink-haired girl still has strange feelings about the whole number deal, but her friend quickly goes up to Ted girl to say hello. She invites her to spend the day with them, thinking that she was going to say no, but to her surprise, she accepts. They go about the mall all together and before the sporty girl can realize, the other two have started bonding over everything. At some point, Nekosaki has to go to the bathroom, so the other two are left alone. Kamiya points at a claw game she wants to try, but as she's never done it before, she ends up losing, so Shikamori helps, winning some candy for her. Feeling in debt, the other girl decides to win something for her. So by the time that Nekosaki finds them, remembering how Kamiya wouldn't smile and reject hanging out with anyone, their bags are full of plushies. Walking home, they find a basket court, so Tay decide to play, but two girls some saying that they need to make a reservation for the court. The girls try to leave calmly, but the two strangers confess that it's pring to play one-on-one. -on -one. So they invite them to a match, winning them over when they mission that they might be afraid of losing. With Miko as a referee, the Tao girls in love with you give their best at the game, having a perfect teamwork and winning the match. In the end, the two strangers ask to take a picture with them, as they all had a really good time. When they have to part ways to go home, Kemiya tells Shikumori that she hopes they can hang out again, more like friends the last time, Wusa makes the girl very happy. The two volleyball team girls walk home together and Kamiya mentions that she can ask her whatever she wants when Nico mentions that now they are friends. Although at first her questions are kind of vain, she quickly starts talking about her friend's relationship. And then it hits her, the girl who everyone always has admired from afar was now smiling, so she grabs her arm and tells her that it has always felt like she was hurting, so she really wants to know who managed to change her. Although the girl explains that she can't tell, she grabs her arm back saying that she hopes to be able to tell her one day and Miko is willing to wait until she explores her feelings, hoping to she can smile finally from the bottom of her heart. With the cultural festival over, now our protagonists get ready for the sports festival. But as in their class, no one has volunteered, got the mixed relay, Tangy have to leave it to luck, which means that you would definitely have to participate. Hakimitsu, who's definitely not a sporty girl, has the bad luck of having to participate as well, melting in despair quite literally. Shikamori cheats to be on it, so she can be with her boyfriend so Inu and Nico volunteer for it, knowing that doing it with ferns would be very funny. Knowing that they have the chance to lose, they decide to stay after classes to practice and things don't look good from the get-go, but the others have to go practice for their other events, so Hachi and Yu stay to practice longer. The girl wants to give up, but the boy's enthusiasm seems contagious, and they stay until later in the night, practicing alone. The day of the festival arrives, and first the boys have their event, eventually losing thanks to the proto's bad luck. Then it's turn for the girls' ball tozing game, which Hachimitsu is in, and although she's slow, she's the only one who can get her balls into the very high net, winning them the second place. The time of the relay arrives, and although she's very nervous about it, hating to be sweaty and covered in sand, Shikamori cheers her up, saying that all of them are there together, so they should have fun. So she asks for all of them to win, wanting to enjoy what makes her friends so happy, even when she can't really enjoy it. So the race starts with Nekosaki being the first runner. She has a nice pace and absolutely makes it to Hakimitsu, who also surprisingly has a nice start. But soon she starts to get very tired to the point where her mind is so black she has to remind herself the order of her steps. Then she stumbles with her own feet and falls face first into the ground. She's very overwhelmed but Yu's voice brings her back to reality, and his ambition to win gets to her, making her stand and pass the baton to him just perfectly. Now the gap the boy has to close is big enough, but luckily for him he hasn't got any problems until there. One of his shoes comes off, but just as his friend before, he has the motivation to kick the other shoe off and run towards his girlfriend in his socks. Shikamori gives him the impression that she'll make them win somehow, and she doesn't disappoint. She closes the gap quite nicely, leaving them in second place. And then it hits Inu. All of his friends have made a very big effort, so it's now up to him if they win. With that thought in mind, he hits the baton and runs at all of his speed towards the end, winning the first place. Yu and Nico are quick to tackle him in a hug, but the proto quickly leaves him to hug his girlfriend desperately, as he's so happy he could cry. Then a teacher gives the blonde girl a stick with a number one flag on it, and she thanks her friend for making the festival a fun time for her. They are friends she can definitely be proud of. We get to see a little about Yu's past, and how although kids did want to be around him, he chose to withdraw not to bring anyone bad luck as he was already causing accidents around his friends. So one day, he went to the temple to ask for a hero who could save him if his life was going to be always a loop of bad luck. Back in the present, Shikamori goes to the mall for some new clothes, as she and her boyfriend are going to go to a very romantic amusement park, since they hadn't had any a long time in a while, and she wanted to look her best. 
They get separated at some point, and although she looks through the stores, she doesn't seem to find anything that clicks for her. When she goes back to her brother, he's being approached by two very insisting girls, but as he gets shy with them, she has to save him, which makes him sulk. She takes the chance to tease him like any good little sister would, so he tells her how cute she isn't. We then get to see how in the past, Shikamura was a correct girl, going with her brother and being called uncute by him all the time. Back at home, she complains about the burnt food, but seeing her brother eats it without a complaint, she copies him. He tells her that she'll start going to the dojo alone. So her mother tells her that she needs to choose what to do, either staying or leaving it, which seems to affect her, as she doesn't like to start things alone. Although her mother is pretty distant, she's happy when her daughter mentions the friends that she made as a reason to stay at the dojo. At school, she never got along with boys as they would fear her for her strength and bother her girlfriends as she never got to experience the liking stage of that age, even when her friends mentioned that the same boys who bothered them were after her. In middle school, the very short hair and still a very common personality, she struggles when her brother tells her that he's leaving Karat to do something else that called his attention. He also mocks her umbrella for being trendy, as he thinks that she doesn't have a personality of her own, so he encourages her to fin something she really likes, something that's hers. Some time later at school, one of her friends introduces her to the shoujo manga world, and this makes a breaking point for her. She falls in love with love and decides that what she wants to do from now on is to be a cute girl. So she leaves her hair to grow and starts worrying more about her appearance, something that she usually wouldn't do. And after one last tournament of karate, she informs her dojo friends that she's going to quit when she starts high school. During the admission exam, her hair has grown a little and she's fixing it when she notices a younger you, whose exam ticket got stuck up in a tree. An older gentleman offers to help looking for another ticket inside of the building, but she tells him she might be able to get the original one. He tries to stop her, as he doesn't want her to get hurt, but she goes anyways, retrieving the ticket, very ashamed for doing something so uncute already, so she leaves without allowing him to thank her. Then the first day of classes, they meet again and he goes up to her to thank her. She tries to leave because she thinks he might see her as weird, but he stops her to thank her properly, saying how grateful he is for her to be alright, as his bad luck could have affected her, and to be able to see her again. He then realizes how embarrassing that sounded and tries to leave, but this moment makes her completely fall in love with him, so she stops him to get to know his name, although he blasts it saying it wrong. Back in the present, her brother is still appalled by how mean she's to him and is still more upset when he realizes that she didn't buy anything. As they make their way back to the car, she stops to look at some lip glosses, explaining to the boy how much stronger she feels if she was able to wear one of those, but they are quite pricey. That night, while she gets her outfit ready, she finds the lip gloss in the table with a note from her brother asking for her to do her best, and the next morning, she goes out ready, lips glossy, to her date. They meet up at the entrance of the amusement park, and Yu is immediately blown away by his girlfriend's looks as she shows a more mature outfit. They quickly enter the park and go to buy some animal ears headband, but the girl doesn't want to wear them, so she chooses a little cape instead, which pleases the boy. Then they get in line for the Sleeping Beauty attraction, but the waiting is way too long. As they make their way in still in line, they start talking about the fairy tale the attraction is based on, and it's pretty clear that Shikamori didn't know about it, which makes the boy giggle. She then mentions that her favorite tale used to be Ugly Duckling, which she finds a bit dark, but she defends herself saying that she likes things with edges. He reminds her about the fireworks time, where she told him that she wanted him to see her cute side, but he explains that he wants to see all of her sides. He then asks her if she has a dream, to which she responds that she dreamed of falling in love, but that wasn't a dream anymore. So all in all, the line is not boring for them like for the other couples as they enjoy every moment together. Once they are able to get in the ride, they realize it's a pretty slow one, so Yu starts falling asleep. When the girl realizes, driven by the atmosphere of the tail and everything, she aims to kiss his cheek to awake him, but the ride ends up abruptly shaking her out of it. He apologizes for falling asleep and asks if she liked it. She mentions that although she liked it, she didn't expect such long waiting. So he offers to go to a shorter line ride next. But she holds his hand and starts running, telling him that she'd wait in every line forever, because being with him makes everything fun. He gets carried away with her and starts running in front of her, still holding hands. They go to as many rides as possible, enjoying sweets and just spending time together, until it's dinner time. However, Yu's bad luck has to make its appearing and by accident, the staff gave away the table he had made a reservation on, so now they have to get fixed in another one. To his luck, the new table is a great update in a really expensive and elite part of the restaurant. They are both really nervous thanks to the romantic atmosphere and because their outfits don't match the fancy environment, but this brushed away when food is placed in front of them. Shikamori mentions that his eyes always glow with the shimmer of a child and that whenever he's with her, things seem prettier to her so she wonders how things would look through his eyes. He gets very nervous about it and starts panicking, so when she asks what does he see on her eyes, he plainly tells her that he sees himself. Although this doesn't throw the girl's riz, and she tells him that all she sees is him, so he's correct. Although he's overheated with shame, he turns the comment back saying that she's the most beautiful thing he sees, and now it's her turn of getting flustered. 
After dinner, Yu asks her what else does she want to do as she tells him that she wants to do what they do in the commercial of the place, one where a young couple kisses. He accepts right away and offers his hat, asking how is he supposed to her, as there were also an elderly couple and a couple her daughter in the commercial as well. The girl is disappointed but still holds his hand and tells him that she'd like to go somewhere where they could talk. He does realize that it's not what she meant, but Teddy still decides to go to the gondola ride to see the sunset. He keeps thinking about it and realizes what did she really want to do, so he's really nervous once in the boat. He offers to take a picture of them with the lights of the park behind them. But when he tries, the power goes off and he's appalled. They hold hands and decide to use their phones to shine some light like the other boats so see in the pitch black darkness. He apologizes for blasting it once again, but she grabs his hand and kisses it, anking him pretty happy with her chivalrous attitude. He mentions how weird it is, given their previous conversation, that she's the only thing he can see at the moment, which makes the girl pretty happy, as having his undivided attention is like a dream for her. She mentions that if she could dream like this, she wouldn't want to wake up, which reminds him about how insecure she is about him leaving her. He then takes the decision of making a very assertive move, kissing her cheek. This makes her nervous, and they stumble a little, falling to the floor of the boat. He then cups her face on his hands and tells her that loves her very much and he'll never leave her side, so she doesn't have to worry anymore. As the light go back on, she tosses herself against his hating him tightly, and tells him that she's happier, that she could in any dream. However, the next day at school, Yu tries to make himself a big human knot, ashamed about how assertive and shameless he was. Meanwhile, the girls interrogate the pink-haired girl, but she keeps saying that everything is uck. Not having any info, they tease her saying that she might have had to kiss her boyfriend to be as happy, and when she doesn't deny it, they jump on her to know all the details. She starts going to put their date, creating big expectations on the girls. But when she gets to the kissing part, they are disappointed on the boy for it being only on the cheek. Still seeing that it made their friends so happy is enough for them. She then starts going about how much time she doesn't spend with him, so she decided to be as open about her feelings as he's with her, to which her friends can only be supportive for.